Hello community, this is Raphael, the Creative Director at Hinterland. I'm excited to share with you some details about our latest update to the Long Dark Survival Mode. We're calling this update Fearless Navigator. This update features a series of new gameplay tools themed around in-world navigation. But before I dive into details about the new features, let's recap the Long Dark's approach to navigation in Survival Mode. We've always avoided the use of a traditional map and GPS style system where you always know where you're located in the game world. This has made world navigation in the Long Dark very different from other survival or open world games in that players have to invest time in learning the layout of the world and recalling major landmarks is critical to orienting themselves. We've all had that experience of becoming disoriented in a blizzard and then coming across that familiar stretch of railway or cabin or particular clearing with that certain combination of trees and rocks in it. Recognizing these kinds of details is key to being able to successfully navigate the world of Great Bear Island. Years ago, we added the charcoal survey feature, which allows you to draw what you can see around yourself on the map using charcoal taken from burned out campfires. This gave players the ability to take a kind of snapshot of the area immediately around themselves including all the resources like reishi mushrooms, branches, cattails, and major landmarks like the Trapper's Cabin or Lookout Towers, so that not only could they backtrack in search of resources they may need later on, but as long as they could find a familiar landmark, they could use their map to orient themselves when lost. Remember, there's no GPS or compass in the long dark. The geomagnetic disaster has rendered those tools completely useless in our game world, and just as in real life, it's easy to get lost in the wilderness, especially if you get turned around in a blizzard. Our unique approach to navigation and mapping is something that is very core to the Long Dark survival mode experience, and we want to preserve that. Many players intentionally avoid using the survey action and don't refer to the map at all, preferring to rely fully on their memory of the world and landmarks. Others would like the map to be a little more useful, particularly as they venture further and further into the vast wilderness of Great Bear Island. Remember, the game world is currently over 50 square kilometers, bigger than Skyrim's map. So over longer running survival games, you can cover a lot of ground, probably too much to keep all in your head. Wouldn't it be nice to have the ability to plan return journeys to places you've already been, or to find important resources you left behind days, weeks, or even months ago? In Fearless Navigator, we've added some new tools that make the map more useful for those who want to use them. We've also added some functionality that will be useful to any diehard survivor, regardless of whether they ever open the map or not and most of these tools are still useful even if you want to just continue ignoring the map altogether. The first thing we've added is a new paint marker system. You can find cans of trail marking spray paint in the world, and selecting from a group of survival themed icons, you can leave useful, high visibility markers on things like the doors of cabins, the trunks of cars, large rocks, and so on. Some of the marker types you can use include danger, food here, and directional arrows. These bright orange markers are easy to see in the world and can be used to help you keep track of ideal travel paths or to warn you about where you saw a bear den so you can avoid it next time. You can also mark places you've already searched or remind yourself of where you've left useful caches of supplies. Most of these markers are also automatically added to the map, revealing a small area around themselves like a tiny survey action, making it possible to find your way back to important locations later on, even if you've left an area or region and want to come back many days later. You can manually delete any marker you are standing in front of, or you can selectively remove it from the map. Once you've had a chance to play with the marker system a bit, we plan to introduce some decay to the paint so that it gradually fades away over hundreds of game days. But for playtesting purposes in this update, we have the paint markers persisting forever. Spray cans can be found in the world and have a limited number of uses per can. So try to be strategic in your markings and please respect mother nature. We've also added a rock cache system. Rock caches are large trail markers that you can also store items in. Just like the intrepid explorers of old, you build them out of stones you find in the world. When you build one, the area around it is revealed in the map, and you can also edit the rock cache's name to give it some kind of descriptive label. You can build up to five rock caches per region, giving you a useful tool to create your own clear landmarks. The rock caches are also tracked in your journal, including the ability to leave a descriptive note of what you stored inside them, making it possible to create your own rock cache supply line to help extend your survival as you explore the world. They are a tool for long-term survival that might save your life down the road. Even with these extra tools that reveal part of the map when you use them, 
Surveying an entire region map can be a painstaking and time-consuming process. We've added a new system of Vista surveys to help with that. Each region has a well-hidden Polaroid photo, no doubt left behind by a previous adventurer, and finding this Polaroid reveals a location in the region that will allow a Vista survey. If you get to that Vista location, a survey action will reveal a large portion of the map to you. Finding the Polaroids won't be easy, and the Vistas tend to be hard to get to, but for those who care about mapping the world, the trade-offs should be highly worthwhile. You can keep track of which Polaroids you found in the collectible section of the journal. Keep in mind that the location of the Polaroids is semi-randomized, so don't expect to find them in the same location twice. We've updated the map's functionality to support these new features, including a sorting function so that you can hide or reveal certain types of information. You can also see the locations of most markers, any vistas you've unlocked, and all rock caches you've built. This is also a good place to remove any markers you no longer want to keep track of. We've added a location survey list to the journal, which keeps track of every named location you have surveyed in a region. This can be a useful tool for explorers to know if they have found everything in an area, and can also provide the means to track your own personal survival objectives, like find five new locations in Bleak Inlet by nightfall. By default, the location names are anonymized to avoid spoiling them for you, but for anyone who is trying to complete the Faithful Cartographer achievement, you can also optionally reveal the location names to ensure you have found them all. And to make the standard charcoal survey more useful, we now account for height when you perform a survey. If you get to a slightly higher location that offers more visibility, the survey action will reveal more of the map than if you perform it from a lower altitude. This gives you the option to be more strategic about where you stand when performing your map survey. As usual, in addition to these core update features, Fearless Navigator also includes dozens of bug fixes and quality of life improvements, including the addition of a new auto walk accessibility feature. We've also implemented an in-game telemetry system that allows us to track a variety of gameplay actions that we can then use to inform future tuning and feature implementation decisions for the game. This system is turned off by default, and it is entirely opt-in. We are not gathering any data from you without your permission. All that said, we think this information will be very useful to us in making decisions about how to improve the game in the future, so we hope you choose to turn analytics on. This can be done in the options menu under Privacy. And one last quick note for those of you waiting for Volume 2 of the Music for the Long Dark soundtrack. It should be available on Steam around the same time this update launches. Volume 2 includes all the music from Episode 3, as well as nearly 30 minutes of additional survival mode music. All told, it's about an hour of additional music composed by Chris Velasco and Sasha Dischikian, but we hope you choose to buy it and give it a listen. Selling the soundtrack allows us to invest further resources in expanding the soundtrack for future episodes and survival updates. We hope you enjoy Fearless Navigator, and as usual, if you want to discuss the update, please jump into the official community to share your feedback and experiences with fellow survivors. If you run into any issues, please consult our support portal at hinterlandgames.com support. For information on future updates and other Hinterland activities, please sign up for our mailing list. And as we'll soon be launching a video version of our popular Milton Mailbag Q&A series, please subscribe to this channel to be notified when we release the first episode in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching, and please stay safe out there. In the era of COVID-19, these words mean a lot more than just avoiding frostbite in the frozen wilderness of the long dark. All the best from the team at Hinterland, and good luck with Fearless Navigator.